Good morning and welcome to my channel today. I'm going to be showing you how to render in V-Ray, how to create a um, render setting for test renders and how to create one for your final renders. So let's get straight to it. To get to the um, V-Ray settings, you need to press on the F10 button on your keyboard or press on this button right here. Now this is a scene I downloaded from V-Ray website itself. I'm going to leave the link in the description. Um, now you've set up your scene, you've done your lighting and everything, and you want to test render what you did to see if it's good or not. You don't want to use a lot of time uh, waiting for the final high quality of render. So you need a render that saves you time and that can show you a pretty good idea about your lighting, about your materials and everything. So you go right here. First thing we're going to do here in the comment section, I'm going to leave all this the way it is. Now in here for the resolution, you want to choose something between like 1500 in here and the width and this can be um, for this aspect ratio you, you, you want to leave it this way or if you want to make it 1000 that's okay as well and that's it here in this tab now if you go to the V-Ray section first thing go to frame buffer and uncheck this one right here and I want you to go here and type in the same thing that we had in there. Yes, the same resolution from this section in here. Right. Now here, in the global switches as well, I want you to make sure that this is set to expert. And I want you to first untick the hidden lights. Right. And after this, leave this as it is. In the image sampler, you want to choose the bucket type, which is a lot faster than the other one that we're going to choose for the final render. I want you to untick the image filter for the test render because this is going to take a long time and we don't want to do this now. So untick this one. Now in here, in the image sampler, we already chose that this is a bucket. So we want to go to the bucket settings in here. Minimum subdivisions should be 1. And the maximum should be 4 for the test render. OK, leave this as it is. And in here, in the global DMC. Now in here, the minimum samples, you want to leave this as it is, you want to go to subdivisions multiply. You want to make that only one. Leave the adaptive mount the way it is, 0.85. Noise threshold should be 0.01 for the test render. The environment section, you should change it depending on the scene that you have. If you have um, scene with any exterior or you have a V-Ray sun or so, you'll need to change these, but this is um, not the topic here. Now in the color mapping, you want to choose the rain heart from here. You want to make sure this is an expert and you want to leave these as it is. Now the burn value should be between 0.5 and 1 to reduce the burned out areas. And uh, make sure that the gamma is 2.2, it's very important. And in this mode section, you want to make sure that it's selected the color mapping only. All right. Now, this is it for this section. Now, let's go to the GI. Now, the GI is the indirect light that you have, the global illumination. You want to make sure you enable it from here for the test render. We will use the radiance map at the, as the primary and the light cache for the secondary. All right. Now go in here for the radiance map settings here. We want to make sure to set it up to minus three 
and minus one. Now this will make it faster, but however, if you want to make it even a lot more faster, but you will have a really bad GI, a really bad outcome, but you still you're gonna have a rough idea about the render. You want to make this to minus three and minus three. This is not gonna make it adaptive, it's gonna be fixed. Now for the subdivs in here, you want to change this to 50 and change this to 20 for um, a better and faster view. Make sure you show calculation page here so you can see what's happening while you're rendering. And then now for the light cache, you want to change the subdivs in here to 600 only. Do not go above that, to, not to make it slower. Change the pre-filter here untick this now also you want to make sure that use of the close erase is selected because this will help you uh, with all the reflective and glossy rays and reflections in the scene and in the settings in here for this now you will need to only set this one. This is dynamic memory limit. This is basically the limit for the memory that you have. If you have, let's say, 10 gigabytes of RAM and you want VRA to only use 9 or 8, you'll need to set this up in here. So you'll need to, for example, set it like this for 8 gigabytes. Now I have about 32 gigabytes of RAM, so I'm setting this to unlimited so the VRA can take whatever it needs with your RAM. That's it for the test render. Now you have the option here to go to the presets and save this preset. You want to name it, for example, low quality or test render, whatever you want, and then press save. I already have it saved in here, so I don't need to do that. But if you want, you can save that so you can get back to it in the future if you make any changes. Now for the final render, let's go to the same thing again over the same thing. Now for the comment section here in the output, you want to put around 4,000 pixels in here. Leave the rest as it is. In the V-Ray section, we want to do the same here for the resolution. And we want to go down in the global swatches, leave them as it is. Now for the image sampler, you want to choose the progressive one instead of the bucket. And for the settings for that, you want to set the minimum subdivisions to one as it is, change the maximum between six and 12. Now, 8 would be a good number, but 12, of course, would give you better quality. Now, for the image filter, you want to choose this one, the Catmo ROM, and just leave it as it is. Here, okay, in the global DMC, you want to go here, the minimum samples, you should, you can leave that as it is, but if you raise it up, it would be giving you higher or better results. I can change this to 32, not necessarily, but anyways, it would give you better quality. In the noise threshold here, you want to set this to 0.005, which will reduce, um, where did it go? <laughs> yes, okay, here it is, yes, this will reduce the noise in your image drastically. So that's it. Now for the GI, we're still going to use the irradiance map and the light cache. In the irradiance map, I want you to change this to minus 5 and this to minus 2, which will give you better results. Change subdivs to 80 or 90. Change the interpolation samples to 30. Make sure this is ticked. Now go to light cache and change the subdivs to 1600. Now the sample size, you can leave it as it is or maybe make it 0.01. You wanna select the pre-filter in here. Make sure this is set to 10, which will give you 
better quality of course it will take more time now as for the settings you want to leave it the same way it was exactly you want to make sure it's ticked you want to set the limit the way you want and keep it that way and that is it now with these settings on now you need to hit render leave it as it is now let's see the results i had already done this this is the final render in here as you can see it took about one hour 11 minutes and this is right here is you know the test render as you can see there's a lot of noise the shadows are not that great not that sharp and it's a bit different in here shadows are smoother less noise better quality reflections and everything but of course as you can see the timing is completely different now this one took one hour 11 minutes well this took only three minutes 20. i hope you enjoyed my video if you like it press on like and if you want to see more videos in the future please subscribe and hit the bell icon thanks a lot this was sam